this is going to be a talk on the 3D printed products. All right. I'm excited and I'm energized to see all these faces here today. I love Liberty Forum. I have to get the, get the winter doldrums out in February and it will make me feel like tomorrow is a new day and I need to get something important accomplished. About one year ago today, that's a little distorted, is it too loud? But one year ago today, maybe not today, plus or minus, this month, I decided I was going to make a 3D printer. I really wasn't interested in 3D printing, just saw it online, said, hmm, looks interesting, I could probably use it for my own purposes to make little electronic gadgets and related. About the same time I got my printer to start put, putting out pieces that look recognizable, I found out there was this group online called Defense Distributed, and they were releasing files for interesting devices, like this thing called the Liberator. Probably didn't saw it on the news. By the way, I have some other little things that have been printed on my printer. The Feinstein 30 round defense distributed magazine. The AR-15 yellow and grip. I'm gonna pass these around the audience. They're perfectly safe, they haven't been. There's no parts in them just so you can see what it's like. So at about the same time that came out, I said, hmm, I wonder if my printer is capable of doing this. I really wasn't that interested in printing guns, but I said, I'm gonna try it. And I knew Porkfest was coming up. And uh, 24, two days approximately and 24 hours of printing later, the parts were completed for the Liberator, for this. Wow. And I was amazed because I couldn't believe that you could print a plastic spring that would have enough power to fire a, a, a primer, okay? But you can, and I built this nearly a year ago, and it still works fine. And it was the first Liberator made in New Hampshire. Some people say it might be the first Liberator made in the wild. And I, it, it, the picture was taken two days after the files were released and they were put online by uh, some other members of the Free State Project and they gained a lot of traction really fast. And I'm thrilled to be here with this gentleman right here who is responsible for those files, uh, a self-described crypto-anarchist who other people have called a gun nut, uh, a genius, a patriot, and a provocateur. Mr. Cody Wilson made it possible for all these files to be available to any one of us. And he's someone who understands that an idea whose time has come, which I love this phrase, cannot be stopped. So let's keep the ideas of liberty moving, and let's give a warm welcome to Cody Wilson. I should just use this mic. Is that hot? Okay, great. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Better. Thanks, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to say. I've never given a technical talk about um, the Liberator specifically, or e really even kind of our technical trials with Defense Distributed. It always lapses into philosophy or, you know, political philosophy. So this is my first attempt at this. Um, this story is, has tried to be captured by Forbes and other people, but it's just kind of the, you know, the broad strokes. It was actually an extremely, as a libertarian audience might expect, an extremely difficult and, and kind of like insane process because there were all these, you know, abstract regulations which didn't quite have um, uh, guidance written in the Code of Federal Regulations that we still had to somehow pretend that we were kind of uh, abiding by. <laughs> I, you know, I, I guess the first thing to say is Defense Distributed had been, had been prototyping uh, the lower receiver for our AR-15 since December of 2012. We had been releasing uh, other people's designs as well after Thingiverse.com, which is a, a popular repository for uh, CAD files, had decided to kind of summarily take all these CAD files down. Um, perhaps this is part of the story that, that you might know if you know about our project. Um, but in the time between AR-15 and the AR-15 magazine development and Liberator Trials, we had already we had already downloaded or released for download over like a million, we had served a million downloads, if you will, 
So it was like significant work before the Liberator had been done. And at that point, I thought it, w it was just so caustic and the stakes were so high and the kind of media anticipation was already there for this that the, the whole testing had to be done in secret um, from what I was already doing. So uh, the project lead was just took Liberator. Um, whereas with other projects we had, we had many CAD developers and designers from different states who would kind of collaborate on the same article. Uh, we took our best electrical engineer who really had no ME experience put him just on the Liberator. Uh, his name is John. Uh, and he lives in Austin. And we tested at a, an actual separate testing location as well. And it's kind of funny to look at the server logs because it was like DOJ, DHS, uh, you know, New York State, NASA. Everybody was just sitting on the server, uh, just kind of waiting because the rumor had kind of come out that, the, that this gun was being tested or, or, or was intended to be released. Of course, this is like the, the apex of the critical commentary, like in the comment sections of major articles saying, you know, you can't print a plastic barrel can't print a plastic gun, um, which was of course like, I mean, that's the gun that, that's being thrown down. So, uh, I guess, I guess what I want to, I want to start with the technicals here. I don't mean to be like kind of boring about it, but uh, it's definitive. And then maybe question and answer will be like the best part. Um, and then maybe I'll say something about the name, uh, which is overlooked or let's say conflated into some, some other kind of message. Um, any like critical remarks I'll have about the media reception or kind of um, the activism endemic to this process or imminent to it, I guess I'll save for my, my talk tomorrow, which I invite you to attend. Um, the Liberator was actually designed in less than three weeks. So uh, the very, very biggest problem, the very biggest obstacle, the reason we hadn't begun doing prototyping before uh, the three weeks where we began the Liberator trials at the end of March uh, was because we were just so constrained by what's called the Undetectable Firearms Act, which before December of 2013 was relatively unknown, uh, even to, to gunnies and to firearms people and to gunsmiths. Uh, essentially that law says you can't uh, even prototype, you can't manufacture, possess, transfer, make, whatever, uh, a, a completely plastic gun. And the way they define it in the law is actually not just completely plastic, but it, uh, any, any gun that's ever created has to contain a certain kind of minimum amount of, uh, of metal to make it um, satisfactorily detectable. And um, this is actually a very difficult standard, and the Attorney General, well, first Treasury, but then the Attorney General, were supposed to promulgate regulations um, assisting gun manufacturers in, in how to uh, abide by this, this law. That never happened. Um, and as maybe some law students know, it's rare, but it's not uncommon, that you can dive through a statute and not actually find the, the corresponding regulations. Um, so we kind of navigated through the maze for many months and then kind of just reached an empty room where they had forgot to fill in the blank. You know. um, and this is actually common now we're, we're beginning to find in, in all these different areas. Uh, so the biggest thing that we needed to do was, we thought, just have a kind of fiction, like a legal fiction. Well, we have a license from the government uh, to become manufacturers. And one of, the, one of the sections in this law was saying that, well, a manufacturer can at least prototype a plastic gun for purposes of testing whether the gun meets the standards in the law. One of these like circular uh, kind of reasons. So if we could just become a kind of uh, you know, federal manufacturer with a, with a class two stamp. Well, we were just testing for legality, Mr. Holder. You know, we just wanted to see. <laughs> I mean, you, you have to have the fiction in the back pocket. You know. my, my extreme fear, I mean, this is when, when Greenberg and other people finally came down to the, to the warehouse to see what we had. I was like, look, our strategy is over compliance. You know, we wanted to be telling them about the law by the time they had kicked in the door. I don't know if that's realistic or not, and especially the, the way I'm critical of other people, uh, how they kind of um, bend the knee to the law. Yeah maybe I should have been a bit more cavalier. And it would have been interesting to do this maybe in another legality or with another team of people in a different country, but uh, I, I thought there was also a kind of, I don't know, like a critical value in, in doing this, in going to the extreme of doing it in the United States, where we know that the legal structure is just like, it's imperative is that you not do this. You know, only, a, only an insane person would attempt this within this kind of legal structure. Um, I'm getting a bit off topic, so basically, it was designed in three weeks, at the end of March uh, 2013, for one of those weeks, I was in New York at a conference where Avi Reichenthal of 3D Systems and a, a number of the kind of consensual capitalist players in, in the 3D, uh, 3D space were saying, oh, don't worry about the 3D gun, you know, it's not going to happen, it's not possible. Uh, and th this was like actually in the keynote, you know, and, and this was a kind of traveling prospectus, this conference series, it's called Inside 3D, I think it's still kind of ongoing, um, where they kind of invite, um, oh, you know, the uninitiated capitalist who wants to, oh, what, is this 3D printing right for me? You know, uh, can I make some money on this? And um, basically the message there was, you know, they've, they've done as much as they're going to do, uh, nothing else is going to happen. Well, that, the day before I got to New York, in the, um, in the kind of deserts of Lockhart, we had just tested our first Liberator. And the way we did it, this was, I think, maybe the critical 
move because for many months we hadn't answered the question even to ourselves, can you print an all plastic barrel uh, for a common gun with common firearms, like you know, ammunition commonly available? Uh, yeah, you can make a custom cartridge, but that's not as sexy as doing something around a 22 or a 38 or 45. Um, and that was, of course, like a very political and necessary question to ask. I mean, it's one thing to make a kind of gun in theory, but it's another thing to be like, look, I have a, I have a pistol that can shoot uh, 380. You have 380 in your garage. You know, this, this makes a very necessary kind of linkage. We had, we had registered a Remington 380 shotgun, uh, a, a small one, a short barrel shotgun, as a Title II firearm some months earlier. And so we began replacing barrels on that 380 um, in different in different widths, uh, in different kind of um, different with different radial prints. Um, and what we found was we thought uh, the first strategy we thought was low chamber pressure. So we tried a 410 that the that the, the, the Remington uh, 370 would shoot. Did I say 380? There's a lot of numbers. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the the idea was like, well, low chamber pressure out. So that'll be the winning factor. And it didn't work that way. Um, the shot. Uh, you know, the wad and the pellets and everything, they all kind of jammed up on each other, basically, This is to make it kind of the easiest to understand. There was this rush for each of the individual pellets to get out of the, uh, of the barrel, and the barrel exploded like a pipe bomb. Um, one of my first memories of the, of the Liberator like, barrel trials was that when we stood there and we pulled the cord, we did a remote fire. Um, we <laughs> yeah, no, I blew up a gun on my hand today. So, <laughs> one of my first memories was that barrel just fucking exploding. And, and you know, it's like the sh you'll shoot your eye out thing from the Christmas story. Right? Because I had only heard that for like a fucking year at that point. You know? <laughs> and you know, it's like, ah, the map, ah. Um, and I remember, you know, one of the pieces just sailing. And, I was just, and that was probably like my lowest point in the, in the project. Because I'm like, yes, all right. Because nothing even came close to the low chamber pressure of the 410. Um, so our next decision was, all right, it, it's not going to be a, uh, a shot shot. It's not going to be that. So. We're not going to try 12 gauge. Forget about that. Uh, we'll go to the 380. That was the only other thing we brought out that day. We had, we had printed two barrels in 380 just on the off chance that 410 didn't work. That's all we had planned for that day.